Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we do something that I've been putting off for a while just to get my skill set a little better and well basically I've been busy doing other things but we're going to build us a shop van for the channel so stay tuned. That's right, we're going to build a shop van. I, I like Chevys rather than the Dodges because it has the solid roof and everything. I know some of the older castings has the solid roof, but I really like the old school custom type Chevy van you see running around on the roads all the time. So, I've got to get this out of the pack, and then we'll take a closer look at it. Alright. Got it out. Now let me put something in here real quick to prevent it from going back shut. Alright, there we go. Again, this is a really, really cool little casting. I don't know what it's going to be like when we strip it down. I've never stripped one of these before, but... I have some decals that Flying Chuck over at Flying Valiant made me. And the color that I'm going to be putting on this goes really well with that red glass. So... These wheels are definitely going to be changed though. So with that stated, let's get this bad boy apart. Because I have some ideas for this thing. This is going to be a, a cool paint job that I've done before, but in a different color. A little variation. I'm going to put some real riders on it. I'm going to put the decals on it. And then we will have a, a custom channel van. Later on down the road, I'll be doing a custom channel truck delivery truck, tow truck, because you know when you do die cast, you have wrecks and stuff every once in a while, you might have to send a tow truck out to get them, so we're not stated, let's get this bad boy drilled apart, I won't show you that because this is just a going to be a quick video showing basically the paint job with the decals and the finished product I guess you would call it, of course we're going to be doing a lot of detailing on the front, there's no brake lights per se to detail. I mean, there's nothing there, so there's nothing to do there. I don't think I'll actually paint the windows. <coughs> but we'll see when we get there. I always let the vehicles talk to me. So with that stated, I'll be right back. Got to drill this bad boy apart. And like that, there we have it, all drilled apart. Got the red wheels, which I will be saving for future projects. Have the red interior, and I didn't know because you can't see in the back of this thing. I didn't know that it had a few packages and stuff in the back. We'll probably be leaving this red just because, you know, I don't know, we'll probably be leaving it red. It folds down to where you can detail it and everything. I might do a little detailing in there. I might detail the steering wheels, a few gauges, maybe the shifter or something, but not a whole lot. Let's put all this over in the container, save it. There's the base. Nothing in there worth mentioning. Just nice and flat base. A little bit of detailing on the bottom. You know, you got the gas tanks and the drive shaft. Might do that. We'll see. And the body. Which is going to go in the stripper. The good old North Carolina red clay. This bad boy will sink up real quick until it gets to the roof. Might take a minute once it gets past there. Oh yeah, look how fast that bad boy's going. But we'll see this. Your time, just a few seconds. My time, tomorrow. <laughs> because I gotta take it out and, and sand it, file it, whatever it needs to be done. I really won't be showing you that just because if you watch any of my videos, you know how it goes. I might put in a few seconds of the clip of me actually doing it or something with a little music or whatnot. But again, this is about the truck. This is about the van, I'm sorry. The wheel selection, the paint selection, how I'm going to apply the paint and all that. It's really not about how to build a custom shop van. It's about showing how to paint a custom shop van, if you will. So, until we get this bit out of the stripper, We'll see. I gotta go to bed. It's getting late. 
All right, I got it all primed up and I went ahead and put one coat of paint on it. As you can see, it's a nice black. And this isn't just any black, this is Wicked Jet Black. And the reason I use this is because all the Wicked colors I have found just really, really lay down flat and smooth. And I've never really had any issues in them. But this will give us, because there's, there's going to be three, three more coats of paint on there that I'm going to have to be applying. But this gives us the backdrop and there's the base. I did it as well. It gives us the backdrop for the, the next coat of paint because what we're trying to do, you have to think of marble is in layers. The black is the base, gives it the the shadow look, if you will. I'm sorry, the shadow look. And then you put the next coat on it and that gives it the marbleized veins. And then you put the transparent color over the top of it and that gives it the final color. And then when you look at it, you, it's like looking into a piece of marble. Like I said, on your counter, it's in multiple layers. But it, I mean, it's really simple the way we do it. It's a simple process, and here's how you do it. This is the paint I'm going to use. It's Wicked Gold Metallic, or Wicked Metallic Gold, and there's the number. And I just use, you can use it however you want to, but I've got this plastic photo cover that I put saran wrap on so I can take the paint and put a dot on it and spread it around and I can throw the saran wrap away as I want and I just use the brush to spread it around and I take the saran wrap and fold it up and you don't ball it, you don't roll it, you just kind of crinkle and fold it and that's what gives you your shapes and everything to your your marble and that's all there is to it. It's that simple. But I've already mixed this up so I'm just going to shake it up for a second and then we'll take it, open it up this is the first time I've used this color actually. Put a dot on here. Like I said again, the reason I put it on this is so I just take it off, throw it away. Take your brush, spread it around. Now you don't want a big gob of the paint because when you take your saran wrap and dab, dab it into the paint, it's going to pick up a lot of paint at one time. So you don't want a big gob of it hanging off. So what I do is I just spread it around and then take the saran wrap, like I said, and just kind of fold it up and, and whatnot, dab it in. And then I always, and you just do it until you get a wide pattern. And then I always start with the base. And the reason I start with the base is to practice. And let's face it, you're not going to see the base. Everybody looks at the finished product at the top. So you can work out any, any defects or, any, or get used to the feel, the way the paint goes on, all that by doing it on just the base. And you just keep going until you're happy with it. And I have found that when, the more you do it and not put paint on it and just kind of spread what's already on there, the better and the, the effect is. But here's the base. I'm going to set it to the side. Now we're going to grab the body, and this is where you'll really see this come to life. Again, you can just use what you got until it starts running dry. Just dab it. Kind of. Sometimes you can give it a kind of a twist. You can give it kind of a drag, just for different effects and different looks. But as you can see, I mean, this just looks amazing. Look how that looks. There's your marble. And by it actually doing it this way and then putting more paint on and, and dabbing and more paint on and dabbing, as you can see, the flatter parts as you press and the saran wrap gets flatter from the dabbing. And you can take it and reload it and then just knock off the excess on the paper towel. But it's actually painting the whole car gold. And you'll see that whenever I get, get it in the light just right. Because what we're going for is a candy apple look. And where you get candy apple, and we'll discuss this in a little bit, where you get any kind of apple look, that's a warm glow, is by painting a transparent color over gold. So that's why, I, that's my favorite color. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm putting the candy apple marble on here or the gold for the candy apple. And then look at this. Now the whole van is actually painted. But a lot of that will be knocked down whenever I put the final coat on it. And, you know, it's just one of those trial and error things. I've done enough of these to where I know how many coats of paint I want to put on it to get the color that I want. I know how many, how much marble that I want on here to get the look I want. Because you can go heavy with the marble and it looked great. And like I said, you can put it on here and kind of twist it and use a corner, use an edge, reball it, redo it until you get the desired look you want. You just keep playing with it and and 
until you get what you want, the look you want. I'm almost happy with it here. And as I said, as I spin it around and light and everything, you can actually see the, the van itself is a gold color. Now let's take a look at that. See, it looks marbleized right here, the gold on the black, but watch, watch what happens as I turn it. Look at that. The whole van is gold. And I'll show it some better here. When the light hits it just right, you can see the marble. But when you turn it, that bad boy is gold. This thing is looking stunning right now. Look at that. I could clear coat it, throw some decals on there and call it done, but that's not the look we're going for. Put some gold wheels on it. <clears throat> this would be one cool van and then detail the headlights, tail lights. But we're not going to stop with that. We're going to put another color. We're going all out with this. So that's what we need to do next is get to that stage. We need to get this bad boy painted. But man, isn't that looking good? I can't stop looking at it. And then you turn it and... Whew. Mm. But let's go paint this bad boy. Sorry for the background noise, but here's the color we're going to use. This is the blood red, as I was telling you, mixed with the 4030. Um, that way it gives it a way to adhere to the body. But the background noise is it's 42 degrees outside, so I have everything sitting in front of a portable heater. Again, we're going to start with the base. That way, if, if we're making mistakes, this is where we can figure out everything. Or we just put on a light coat, that way it'll tack up and give the next layer something to stick onto. So we, the next layers will be wet coats. So I'm just hitting it real light. I like the way it looks, so we're going to set it to the side and then we'll do the base. I mean the body, I'm sorry. This bear boy. And I know how many coats about that it's going to take. I'm going to have to probably get four to five coats on this to get the really, really dark red that I'm wanting. So, you know, just time. It doesn't let it dry a little bit in between each coat. I wouldn't go too many coats, you know, 10, 15 coats. I wouldn't recommend that. But as we spray, we want to give it a, about a 50-50 overlap. Start off of the vehicle, come up, go off of the vehicle. That way, each layer has a full 100% coat on it. You know what I'm saying? Each, each pass. And that's all we're doing. And you can see it's starting to knock down some of that gold. A really really cool look i think if you ever get an airbrush you need to try it because it's just another great tool well, let's put another coat on the base as you can see here we go you'll start seeing it take more and more effect the more layers we get see look how dark looking that is now again 50 percent overlap start off end off what i mean by that is you want to start off with whatever you're painting and let half of it hit and then when you go to the next pass allow 50% overlap the top pass have 100 and the, the bottom half will have 50% and then as you do that and work down the whole thing will have 100% on it look how richer and deeper that looks now I'm, I'm excited let's get it let's get another coat on this body I'm excited about this I've been wanting to try this color ever since I got my airbrush and I've, I've done several other cars with marbleized effects. That's why I know how many colors, how many coats it'll roughly take. I did a green marbleized gasser for James Hewitt. So I've done a marbleized rat thing for Jeff Brummett. And it's just a really, really cool, neat effect. Now, will it, is it for every car? No. It all depends on what you're after. And is it for everybody? No. But it, it's, look at how good that looks. <clears throat> It's just another tool to give us a more custom look. One that you're not going to find in the store. But this will probably take five coats. Wow, let me just tell you, this thing turned out way better than I thought it would. Holy moly. And I've sent some pictures around via emails and private messages and stuff, getting people's opinions, and they're just blown away by how it looks. I'm just going to go ahead and show you. Look at this bad boy. Holy cow, look at that. I mean, this bad boy is something else. I mean, it truly is, and I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, this thing has turned out way better than I thought it would. And I've put one coat of clear on it, that's why it's real shiny the way it is, but man. But we gotta 
do the next step. I, you know, like I said, this video was about the paint. I've showed you how to do the paint and everything. Just look at that. Oh man. I've, sh I've showed you how to do the paint and everything. So now we've got to finish this bad boy up. And what I have here is the decals going on the side of it. If you don't know who this person is, I'll put the info below like always, but it's Chuck over at Flying Valiant. A lot of you know who he is already. He does a lot of great uh, weathering techniques and kind of junkyard builds and just all kind of stuff like that. He's done some gasoline builds, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and he, he does all kind of stuff and he's, he's working with a couple other YouTubers. Uh, Twice Diecast and Dotson Man Diecast and they've started the Diecast Media Network. They do podcasts. They've already talked to Jakarta um, Diecast and if you don't know who that is go, go watch Diecast Media Network and you will be blown away by some of his work. But anyhow Chuck made me these and I'll try to get it to where you can see. I don't know if you can or not. Let's see right there if you look at that one, you can see I've got old man die cast around the head. So I'm going to be using two of the larger ones. But Chuck made me those. He made me different sizes so I can use them for different things. These small ones work great on bases of customs and everything if you have room. But not only does he do decals, he does 3D printing as well. He actually sent me these when he sent me a box of goodies one time. 3D printed steering wheels. Those things are super cool. I've started using them. I don't want to use a bunch of them because, you know, when they run out, they're gone. But with that stated, if you need something like decals, custom decals, hit them up. And if you need something 3D printed, hit him up. He can, he can do stuff like that for you. But we're going to put this on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the larger ones on each side. It's going to go somewhere around in this area. If that won't fit, I'll move it over to here. So, but the reason I put a coat of clear on here to start with is with water-based or alcohol-based paints. If you use Microset and Microsol on them, which I plan to do it because I really want these to stick and I, you know, I want them to conform if they have to lay over these edges. The chemicals and stuff in that can actually react with the paint and cause the paint to change a little bit. Whenever you look at your Q-tip, you can see the paint on the Q-tip. So that's why I clear coat it. Plus, if you I recommend doing it anyway. And I'm just going to hold it like that so you can see that beauty. But I recommend doing it anyway because it gives the decal something to slide around on. It just makes it better overall. But let me get these cut out and we'll be right back. There's no need you watching me do that because how hard it is. I just got to be careful not to cut any of the wording out. So we'll be right back. Alright, here we go. This is where they're going to go because I've done check to see how they fit. and They're going to go right there like I said. Right about where that old window would be. I mean it would look good up here too but I just think it would look better back here. So there's a lot of different ways of doing this. You can use this water. Some people put a sponge in there like the water soak up but the, you know however you want to do it. Some people use tweezers because they don't want their fingerprints on it or anything. Well I've been doing model kits and everything ever since I can remember. I've never had issues but do it how you want. I'm going to use the micro set micro saw. If you're not going to use this, all you got to do is just, what I recommend is taking your finger, dipping it in there, or a Q-tip, putting some water on the die cast, and that, that gives extra lubrication to be able to move your decal around. But since I'm going to be using this, all I have to do is just open it up, dip my Q-tip down in it, spread some on there. And what this does, it helps the glue stick to the car better once it dries. But everybody has different ways of applying decals. You know, basically you just wet it until it, you want to get it just to where it barely starts coming off the paper and then stop because if you go any further than that, you, really, you run the risk of pulling the glue off. Oh, come on, fingers work. Now we just got to get it up to where we want it. And once you get it where you want it, you take your Q-tip and try to work the wrinkles out, if there are any.
here we go there's the name on the side of the van look how cool that looks <laughs> try to work out any wrinkles you can on the clear and then the micro saw will actually make most of that disappear in a way to make it kind of lay flat and then your clear coat of course will take care of the rest just about ready for the other side the, gl the glue that he's for the paper he uses it sticks really good so it takes just a second longer to get it to where you can work with it but you want to get it just to where it starts to come off the paper and then go with it because like I said you can end up run trying to the water can end up actually diluting the glue and you won't have any adhesive to stick your decal on with so you gotta it's a fine line you have to be kind of quick with it that's about right right there take your tip take all the water out of it I recommend working from the middle out and you know, kind of work it down on any edges that you have like such. I'm sorry, you can't see. Kind of run it down that crease from, for the body line and up there at the top. Just to make sure you get everything out. And then just work the bubbles from the inside out. And look how that looks. I think that looks pretty dang good. And then when I put the microsol on it here in just a minute, it will get rid of the edge of that paper and make everything lay just really nice and flat man yeah i am liking this but once you get it on give it a minute to dry i mean you don't have to let it get perfectly dry come back around close up this because these believe it or not Last time I used these, these were full. I knocked them over. So I put the lid back on so you don't do the same thing that I did. <laughs> but now we're just going to take the other end of the Q-tip. Micro saw. And we're just going to put it on here. Just work it in. Like so. We're not going to mess with a lot of rubbing. Because what you want to do is you want to put this stuff on here and just forget about it. Trying to, I got one little spot where I put my finger now. I want to put a little bit extra on there and try to work it out. But you just saturate the whole thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be soaking wet like if you turn the car on the side, it runs off. But you get the idea. And normally there's enough in the Q-tip where you can do both sides. So, I'm going to let this sit for just a second. And we'll flip it over and then I'll show you the finished product afterwards. And then we'll let this sit for a day or two and then we'll clear coat it and do the final assembly but one thing i wanted you to be aware of doing this if you've never used it before and i'm just assuming that you haven't you know i always try to assume that when i do my videos so people can try to learn and not screw up because i typically will put in the screw ups <laughs> if i have any but when you use the micro saw, okay, this is the second part. That's why I have them labeled one and two so we don't get them crossed up. If you put that on there, if you decide to use any type of micro uh, setting agent like that, the edges will actually kind of raise up. It will actually kind of bubble up on you. Do not worry about it. Like I said, you just put it on there, walk away from it, leave it, let it set for... I don't know 10 15 minutes come back because what it will do is it, it, it reacts with the glue reacts with the paper it'll raise up and kind of just pull itself and lay back down to where it fits nice and over any contours or anything but just look how good that's gonna look but I wanted to put that in there so you would know it 
because I don't want you to go buy this stuff and use it because you saw it in my video or somebody else's video as far as that goes and put it on there and you're like oh no it ain't doing right and you take a q-tip and try to rub everything out until it dries it does not work that way trust me it does not work that way put it on there wet it and walk away because you are now done with your decals all right are you ladies and gentlemen ready to see a thing of beauty be assembled i'm going to tease you just for a minute but i'm going to show you the interior i really didn't do anything to it but what I like to do is I like to leave surprises because, you know, let's face it, we're not going to be here forever. So I always, whenever I do a custom, I like to do, you know, a little something different. So I actually put the date that I did this car or finished it by OMD and my name. And this will be inside the van forever until somebody takes it apart or the van gets thrown away or whatever, you know. But there's that, and I will go ahead and show you the base, my wheel selection and everything, which I knew these were the wheels. I've actually had these wheels before I bought the van, because I knew I wanted to use these wheels on a truck or a van at one time. But there's the wheels, that's all I'm going to show you, and you can see from that little strip right there how good that's going to look together. I mean, you're gonna, you can see how good that's going to look. Now that stated, I'm going to stop now and... What you'll be seeing as I talk is what we started with. Because you can see it's just you know, the white van with the cards and everything on it. It's that cool casting and everything. It really is. I like it. That's why I bought several of them. I, I have quite a few of them to be honest. But I do like this casting and everything. Now I do wish that it did not have red windows and all that. But... With that stated, this is what we started with, and I knew that the red would go with the interior and stuff that I'm going, I mean, the, the paint and stuff that I put on this casting. I, you know, I just knew that it would work with it. So, we stripped her down, we, we did our little fancy paint job on it and everything, and now we have the finished product before us. And I've got to tell you, I, I, <laughs> I really like how this one come out. I like the paint, the paint scheme on it and everything. And I've showed it to several people via direct messages and everything, and they really like it too. I mean, it did. It turned out great. And with that being stated, I'm going to be quiet, and now you can see the final product. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you all so very much for watching, as always. You're all greatly appreciated for being here. And I hope, you know, that you might learn a little something or find something interesting that you like or whatever. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.